Hey, Bayside family. It's uh, great to have the opportunity to come uh, to you with another uh, midweek online video. As you know, we were in our church building this past Sunday. It was great to be able to worship with all of you who came. For those of you that were at home, we hope you enjoyed the online service that happened. Uh, just a, a little note on that. Uh, we have changed our RSVP deadline date to Thursday, tomorrow at, at noon. And the reason we've done this is so that we have some time in the office to, to process all of those things. So that if we need to go to a second service because our first one is full, uh, we'll have the time to accommodate that and to let you know what's happening. Uh, last week at when we didn't have a deadline for RSVP, we got a lot of calls and emails and messages to the church office once we closed for the weekend. Um, letting us know that people wanted to come to church or they weren't able to make it, uh, those things. And we weren't able to get back to you on time and, and we felt bad for that. And so we wanna make sure that we're able to do our jobs the best that we can. And so make sure if you're coming to church on Sunday that you RSVP no later than Thursday at noon. And we're looking forward to worshiping with you uh, here in our building. Well, today we're going to look at a passage at the beginning of Hebrews chapter 3. Before we do, we're going to go to a time of worship. And again, I want to encourage you to, to just enter in, worship God where you're at today, that, that He hears His people and He loves our worship and our praise. Let's give Him that praise now. There 
Well, yesterday an announcement came through the media that, that I've been waiting for. Uh, Major League Baseball announced that their season is going to start on July 1st, or at least training camps are going to open on July 1st so that there will be baseball this summer. Now, I don't know if you're a baseball fan or not, but, but that makes me excited to feel like summer is going to feel a little more normal uh, than it has so far. You, you know, with sports, there are legendary players. There are people who, who will get the title of GOAT, the greatest of all time. You know, in basketball, there's, there's Michael Jordan. In, in baseball, there is a Babe Ruth. You know, there, there are all of these people who, who, who any other athlete in the sport compares themselves to. In the passage we're reading today, the, the writer of Hebrews, it's like he gives Jesus this goat status, this greatest of all time status. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. And I just want to share this. It says, Therefore, brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus had been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. And, and you know, when we're talking about this, the writer is writing to a group of Jewish people, and those people would know who Moses is. They would know the significance of, of Moses' leadership and delivering the people of Israel from, from Egypt and all of those things that had happened. You know, throughout the New Testament, we see different writers um, use examples of Old Testament, we'll say heroes or, or, or greatest of all time status people uh, to make their point. And here in this passage, the, the, the writer is saying that, yes, Moses was an awesome leader, but Jesus, Jesus, he is, as we've talked about, he is the answer. You know, and, and, and as great as Moses was, Jesus is far superior. And this isn't to, to downplay who Moses was, because Moses played an important role throughout Scripture. And you know, when, when we think about our own lives, here's the reality. You play an important role in the story that God has written, but Jesus, he is our answer. He is the one who has, I'm going to use this, this phrase, built our house for us. He, he's saved us. He's delivered us. In this passage where we read, it says, we share in a heavenly calling. We share in a heavenly calling. We are about in a part of something greater than, than ourselves when we choose to follow Christ. In Christ, well, Christ is the builder of of the house. You, you know, as much as a new home is amazing, the person who built it is the person that really should be given the, the, the glory or I'll use the word praise. And you know, each part of that house plays a significant role, but there is somebody who placed those pieces there. And in this passage, the writer is saying that, that someone like Moses, a significant figure in Old Testament history and, and a leader of Israel who was a great leader and a man of God, he plays a specific role as, as a foundational point or as, as a, a piece of the house that has been built. But the contractor, the one who has done the building, the one that has put all those pieces together right from the beginning of time is Jesus himself. He is the one that has constructed this house. And, and you know, it's interesting to think that, that as we play a role in God's story, that, that I like to think that I am actually a piece in that building. It, now, it may not be as significant a piece as what Moses, uh, Moses had. It may not be as, as significant of a role that, that he has played. But I get the opportunity as a child of God to, to be a part of something great. 
You know, you as, as a child of God, you get to play a role and be a part of something great, something bigger than yourself, something far greater than yourself, and that is the kingdom of God. Because God is, is building his house. Jesus Christ is building his house and we are all a part of it. And so next time when you start to think of the greatest of all time, I want you to be reminded that, that Jesus is our answer. As great as any of us can be, Jesus is the builder. Jesus is greater. And, and, and as important as our roles are, Jesus is our answer. Lord, we thank you for today, God. I thank you for each person that, that is a, a part of these videos, Lord. We pray that, God, that you just be with us through, through this COVID-19 pandemic that's happening around us, Lord. God, help us to use wisdom. Help us to use, use uh, guidance through these times. God, may you be Lord of our lives. Wherever we're at and whatever we're doing, God, may you be exalted. May you be lifted high, God. And may we give you the praise that you're so deserving of, Lord. God, as we begin to, to open up our, our, our world around us and our community and our church, Lord, we pray that, God, that, that you would be present, Lord. You'd help us to make wise decisions as, as to when to go and, and, and how to go about doing that, Lord, and, and help us to be, uh, be vessels for you. God, even in, in our homes, even when we can't go out, God, help us to remember that, that we can still be vessels for your work, Lord. May these times be, a, be times that we grow closer to the builder, that we grow closer to the greatest of all time, and, and help us to remember the sacrifice that was made, the blood that was shed so that we could have salvation, so that we could have freedom from the sin that otherwise would, would be holding us in bondage. Lord, we just thank you for today. We praise you, God. I pray that you'd help us to, to live for you each and every day, God, and that, that you would uh, bring us together, whether it's in person, here in the building, or online on Sunday as we worship you and lift you up as your church. God, we love you and praise you. In your name we pray, amen. Well, God bless. I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember that, that we are a part of something greater, but we are a part of 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 what Jesus Christ is building. And I don't know about you, but I think that's encouraging and great news. God bless.